Welcome to Lesson 12b, the Creeping Flow Approximation. In this lesson, we define creeping flow, which is also called Stokes flow, and we'll derive the approximate form of the Navier-Stokes equation appropriate for this kind of flow. I'll do an example of a sphere in creeping flow, and I'll discuss two different forms of the drag coefficient. First, a definition of creeping flow. Creeping flow is low Reynolds number flow. It's also called Stokes flow in honor of Stokes same Stokes of the Navier-Stokes equation, what we mean by low Reynolds number flow is that the Reynolds number is very small compared to 1. How does this occur? Well, Reynolds number is defined as rho VL over mu, so Reynolds number is very small. When either rho is very small, viscosity is very big, speed V is very small, or length scale L is very small. An example of the first case is if you go up at very high altitudes near the edge of the atmosphere then the density is very small. An example of large viscosity is flow of honey or lava. As in this picture, the viscosity of molten rock is so huge that even though this is a large length scale, this is still a creeping flow. An example of the third case would be the flow of glaciers, where the speed is extremely small. It takes months or even years to move a few meters. And an example of the fourth case is microorganisms, as in this picture. The length scale of these organisms is microscopic, and I'll add here any combination of these four can bring about a very small Reynolds number. Now let's look at the approximate form of the Navier-Stokes equation for creeping flow. Here's our normalized form of the Navier-Stokes equation. We're talking about incompressible flow, and recall from a previous lesson that we had these five terms. Let's consider steady flow, so this first term goes away, and let's ignore gravitational effects. So this term goes away. And as you may recall from a previous lesson, all of these circled terms, if they're properly normalized, are order of magnitude 1. When the Reynolds number is very small, since Reynolds number is in the denominator, the viscous term is huge. Compared to the inertial term, which is of order 1, this term can be orders of magnitude larger. So this inertial term can also be neglected. The only remaining terms, then, are the viscous term and the pressure term. To balance this equation, the Euler number has to be large, and these two terms have to remain. We end up with this approximate equation, Euler number times del star p star is approximately 1 over Reynolds number times del star squared v star. Another definition of creeping flow is flows in which inertial terms are negligible compared to viscous terms. Notice that the inertial terms have dropped out. Again, since the two starred terms here are of order of magnitude 1, the Euler number must be the same order of magnitude as 1 over Reynolds number, so that this equation can be balanced. In other words, viscous forces are balanced by pressure forces. If we write this equation dimensionally, we have the gradient of P is approximately mu del squared V. This is the creeping flow approximation. This equation is certainly much simpler than the full Navier-Stokes equation, and therefore easier to solve. I make some comments about this equation. As we already said, there's negligible inertia in creeping flow. For example, compare a person swimming and a microorganism swimming. When you swim, you can glide. You push yourself off the wall, or you do some strokes and stop, and you'll glide through the water. A microorganism, on the other hand, cannot glide. We can glide due to inertia. The microorganism cannot glide due to lack of inertia. As a result, all movement stops when a microorganism stops wiggling. It can't glide. I'll illustrate this with the video clip. The closest thing for us to experience this would be trying to swim in honey, or swimming in a ball pit, as in this short clip from the Big Bang Theory. Another example is squeezing out toothpaste. As long as you apply pressure, the toothpaste comes out. But as soon as you stop, there's no inertia, and the toothpaste stops flowing. If you tried that with water, it would keep flowing because of inertia. Continuing our comments, density does not appear in the creeping flow equation. I repeat the equation here, and notice that density has dropped out. So density is not important in solving this equation, although rho does appear in the Reynolds number which helps to determine if the Reynolds number is very small. But once we're sure that Reynolds number is small, density has dropped out of the equation. As an example, let's consider aerodynamic drag, 
on a sphere in creeping flow. We can perform a dimensional analysis, which is a good review of a previous lesson. We get Fd as a constant times mu VL. Again, notice that there's no density in here. It turns out that you can solve the creeping flow equation over a sphere exactly and analytically. You get Fd equal 3 pi mu VL. So our constant from dimensional analysis is actually 3 pi. In fluid mechanics, we like to talk about non-dimensional parameters like drag coefficient instead of Fd itself. Here we have two options to define Cd. The usual definition of Cd, which is Cd equal Fd over 1 half rho V squared A. A, recall, is the projected frontal area, which is a circle if you look at the sphere from upstream. We now plug this equation into this Fd term, and we plug in A, and do a little algebra. We get 24 mu over rho Vd. We recognize this as 1 over Reynolds number. So the usual Cd for a sphere is 24 over the Reynolds number. A second option is to notice that Fd is a constant times mu VL for flow over any object in creeping flow. So it seems obvious that we can use this constant as a type of drag coefficient. So the second option, since it turns out that all creeping flows have the same form, which we obtain from dimensional analysis, we define Cd of creeping flow as the constant, where Cd is Fd over mu VL, where L is some characteristic length scale of the problem. We would pick D, the diameter, if we're talking about a sphere. So we set L equal D, and we know from our analytical solution that Fd is 3 pi mu VL. So here Fd is 3 pi mu VD. So Cd creeping is 3 pi for a sphere. Other objects in creeping flow would have the same equation, but a different constant. In other words, a different creeping drag coefficient. Now let's do an example. Namely, let's calculate the terminal settling speed of an air pollution particle. I teach some air pollution courses as well, and we're typically dealing with very small particles measured in microns, where most of the time these particles settle in the creeping flow regime. In this problem, we're looking for the terminal settling speed, which is the steady settling speed at which aerodynamic drag force is balanced by weight, actually weight minus buoyancy. In this problem, I have a 40 micron sphere with this density and this air density and viscosity. This is an air pollution particle high up in the atmosphere, and I want to calculate Vt. To solve this, we assume creeping flow, and we'll have to check afterwards if our Reynolds number is indeed small enough. For a sphere in creeping flow, Fd is 3 pi mu times Vtd. The weight minus the buoyancy force is the volume of the sphere, pi d cubed over 6, times rho of the particle minus rho of the air, times g. This buoyancy force is due to the air that's displaced by the particle, as we discussed in a previous lesson. The steady terminal settling speed is when these forces balance. So we equate these and solve for Vt, which is our answer in variable form. Now we plug in the numbers. D is 40 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, and that's squared over 18 mu times the difference in density times g, and we get 0.09013 meters per second. So to three significant digits, Vt is 0.0901 meters per second. Finally, as I mentioned, we need to check the Reynolds number. Again, we plug in our numbers. Be careful here. This density is the density of the air. Since Reynolds number is based on the fluid, don't use the density of the particle in calculating Reynolds number. This is Vt that we just calculated, and the diameter, and the viscosity. And we get a Reynolds number of 0.209. Is this much smaller than 1? Not really. So the creeping flow approximation is not strictly valid for this flow. But this terminal settling speed is reasonable as a first approximation. In a later lesson, I'll show how to calculate this more exactly for cases like this where the creeping flow approximation is not strictly valid. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.